In this video, I'm going to make these two bowls. I originally was going to make one. This was the first one. And then I made a second one, and you'll see why if you'll go into the video. Uh, this is called a Wonder Bowl because it's equidistant anywhere you measure it. There's a name for that. That's a triangle. It's got a specific name. I forget what it is. I'll look it up and have it in the description. But as you can see, it's, it's almost triangular shape except it's curved sides. And the, the wonder of it is you measure it across directly anywhere on it. It's the same distance everywhere you look directly across from each other. Uh, it's an ancient, or I say old, and supposedly in the Gothic churches and things, they use this sort of a, of a design in a lot of, a lot of Gothic orchestra, architecture, is what I understand. But anyway, stay tuned. I'll show you the pattern. This is a little more involved than just laying a pattern on the wood and cutting it. You've got to cut each layer with a different angle so that it'll match. You got to know the width of the bottom of each one that you want so you can get the angles right. Plus, you got to know the uh, thickness of your material. You just take a flat board that's much made out of one flat board. Uh, that right there, that's one board made one bow. So stay tuned. I'll show you the pattern and explain how it works, and cut it and put it together. Well, here's the pattern, uh, the material, and another little tool device you have to make. That's one way of determining the angles for each of these rings. I've never made a bowl before with a scroll saw. It's just a new one on me, and it's a very oddly shaped bowl. Uh, it's got uh, the, the three rings that you have to cut, and each one is at a different angle. So, according to his article and the way he described it, the bottom of the ring has to be a specific width, and they're marked here. And you have to figure out, according to the length of the, the width and thickness of your material, and this is three-quarter inch poplar, uh, you have to cut a specific angle to get the width on the bottom of the ring. So he made this little uh, block. He uses scrap wood, and this is this is wood that's the same thickness as the as the blank. And since it's going to be four layers, you take four of these and glue them together. And I didn't glue the top one because that's too tall for my scroll saw, but I clamped it on. And then you draw a line right here as your reference line, and then you measure over the width of your ring and four times if it, the width of the ring is three sixteenths, four times three sixteenths uh, will give you three quarters. So you go three quarter of an inch and draw a line to that. And the same way all the way across using the width of your ring as a reference point to draw your line to. So then you take since that I've got the angle on there now and that will uh, put that on the saw and adjust the blade to that angle. That's supposed to be the proper angle within a half a degree, he says, to get the angle on each ring. Plus, he's doing something else here I've never seen, and I'm all kind of excited about trying this. Normally, you have a, a, an inner ring like this. You drill you an entry hole. Well, what he did is you see he's got that line there. That's where he wants the grain to go, and I've got the grain running in that direction. And so you just enter right here. He's got these lines for your entry. And then you can glue that back together. And with the grain running that direction, it more or less hides it. Uh, I'm going to see how that works. I kind of like the idea of not having that entry hole, especially in a bowl. So this just a, should good be a, a matter of quick cuts. It's not going to take long to cut it. Just make sure you're very accurate and get the angles correct. So I'm going to use a number five blade. And get that in the saw and I'll get to the saw and we'll see if this cuts and stacks together properly. It's supposed to be very little sanding if you cut it well. So we'll see. This is all new to me and we're going to try this. There I've got the blade set for the first angle. We've got four cuts and four angles. And I have discovered I'm going to have to talk to, take this top piece off because when I go try to go this angle this gets in the way. But the angles are still correct, uh, even down if you take the top off. So I'm going to set these first three, and then I'll probably chop that top off to set the fourth one. But let's get this first cut made, 
and see how this works. So I glued that together and it's just like he said it pretty much disappeared it's going to be a little sanding there's a slight raise there but not much but uh, I think it came out really nice plus the bottom of the ring came out to the width he said it needed to be I measured it and it's 3 16 so so far so good now I'll set the angle and cut the next one Well, I didn't have to take that top block off. I just made it, as you can see, but I've got that angle. Now, I pieced those two pieces together I've already cut. They're going to fit pretty good, but there's still going to be some sanding. I don't think my saw tracks as well as it should, but I'm going to be able to make it work. The inside lines out pretty good, and we'll see how this last ring looks when I get it cut. Well, it's cut out. Uh, I've got kind of a dry fit here just to kind of see how it lines out. It looked like my angles weren't exactly right, but they're still within range. It lines up fairly well on the inside. The outside's off a little bit. It's not major off. It's within sanding range. So I'm going to build it up a layer at a time and uh, start with the first string against the base and then sand that to match, make it a good fit, and then work up to the next one and just work up that way and sand both inside and outside as I come up. I think it's going to turn out okay and it's going to be what it's supposed to be. But I believe a combination of uh, my angles possibly off a little bit and uh, my, my blade may have wanted to skew a little bit as you, the further down you go the thicker the wood is you cut. And my saw is not real good at cutting thick wood straight and that's the reason I was moving so slow with it. But anyway, it's going to be within range to sand it and make it look good, I believe. So I'm going to get started on it.
Well, it's assembled. I've got 90% or better of the sanding done. Um, pleased the way it came out in spite of the fact that I didn't have the angles exactly right, so it required more sanding than I really wanted. But I made it work. I'm thinking about trying it again and uh, doing a little more experimentation and research on my angles. There's supposed to be a website that'll give you uh, those, and I'm going to check that out. Anyway, this guy had this procedure, and I think it's pretty good. It's just uh, I didn't get them applied properly to my uh, my block, whereby I used for my uh, angles to cut each one. It worked, but it took a lot of sanding to make it fit, and I still got some more to do, and then I'm going to put a finish on it. I'm probably going to use some uh, tongue oil on it, and I'll make, uh, make it look, all, it'll bring out the little grain a little bit and darken it up some. So let me continue on and do that, and we'll see what it looks like. Well, there it is. I put some uh, Danish oil on it. Uh, that was a little more sanded than I wanted to do. So I've checked my angles, and I realized I had one of the angles off quite a bit, and uh, another one off a little bit more. It's fairly quick to cut. I'm going to call this one complete, but I think I'm going to adjust those angles and cut it again, and we'll see if it looks any better. Now, I think it will, and probably can do it without having to do as much sanding. Uh, I'm pleased with the way this turned out, but I believe it could be better. It's kind of rough on the inside where I had to sand it, but uh, it's still completed, and so I'm going to call it good on this uh, part of it, but I'm going to try to cut it again. And I'm going to go ahead and cut it, mount the pattern, and get my material ready. And uh, I've got my new angle block set up with a little better angle on it. But, uh, all Two of the angles, I think, were off a little bit, one of them quite a bit. So let me cut it, and I'll stack it together, and we'll see if it looks any better. Uh, I adjusted the angles, got them a little better. And I tried to cut a little more accurately. It's much better, but I still had to do some sanding. It wasn't perfect, but uh, I like the way it turned out. So now I'm going to have two of these bowls. But anyway, uh, I did go to the website. He has a website in, in this article that came uh, this uh, project came from. And uh, I had been there before, been a long time. I've forgotten about it. But it has a calculator to show you how to calculate a pattern and draw a pattern uh, for a bowl, different shaped bowls, and uh, depending on the width, width of the rings and the thickness of the wood, it can figure the angle that you need to cut for each uh, layer. Most bowls are like, like I did. I used that uh, website to con uh, create the pattern to make this little four inch bowl. That's made out of half inch poplar. Uh, just to experiment, learn how to use it, and I'm going to do a little more of that probably because uh, it's intriguing. The width, like I say, the width of the of the layer and the thickness of the wood will determine the angle you cut to make this match up to give you that width. And and try to if you get it done right, you could probably do it without very little sanding. But still, I had to sand on this one quite a bit also. But anyway. Uh, that's, uh, I'm going to put a link to that uh, website at scrollmania.com and I'll put it in my description down there and you can go check it out yourself. There's a lot of other good stuff there. But it's, it was originally by, kind of based on uh, the bowl thing. So it's very interesting to just take a flat piece of wood and make a bowl out of it. So I hope you enjoyed that. And, uh, and, and the other thing about this bowl I haven't mentioned is this shape. It has a particular name. I'll have to look it back up again. But it's a triangle that the distance is the same no matter where you measure it. It's not a perfect circle, but just like a circle, if you measure it directly across, it's the same distance. In this case, it's 7 inches. You can measure this anywhere straight across, and it's 7 inches. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you like it, hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. I'm going to make it into some more bowls and see if I can do some mix and match colors and different things and try to create some unique looking things. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.